Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco, Senior Editor of Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2011 Northeast Astronomy Forum. And I'm speaking now with Scott Roberts, President of Explore Scientific. Hey, Scott is a longtime amateur astronomer and a very well known in the telescope business. And, and he's got a lot of equipment here today. You've got one of the biggest booths. You've got a lot of new stuff. Give me the highlights of what's new. Okay, well let's start off by looking at the new 6-inch ED APO from Explore Scientific. This is an airspace triplet using FCD1 Hoya glass, carbon fiber tube. It'll come with a right angle finder, an 8x50, but it's a special one. This has a uh, correct reading or a correct image 8x50 right angle uh, prism. It has a helical focuser and also a separate Eye, you know, eye lens focuser as well. All right, so you can you can focus the reticle so it's perfect for your eye. That's right. All right, you've got the focus, but you can get the focus for the stars. Right. Wow, that's really nice. And then you can rotate this to align for the polar alignment? Exactly, it makes polar alignment really fast. That's nice. All right, what about the focuser on the main telescope? Well, you'll notice it's a big, beefy, three-inch focuser, okay? It's a rotatable focuser. Top, top end here has locks. It's a rack and pinion uh, design. Uh, with a two inch and inch and a quarter adapters. All right, and it's because it's dual speed. Dual speed, so you got real fine adjustments here. This is all standard equipment. All right, and what's nice is I, I noticed you've got compression ring inside, but you've got three lockdown screws in the compression ring. That's so you right. get stuff in really. They're going to be using big cameras on this, filter wheels, large eyepieces, whatever. This focuser can do the job. All right, now speaking of cameras, it's a 152 aperture, it's an F. F8. F8 refractor, so that'd be nice for imaging. Absolutely. All right, so are you going to have, uh, is there a field flattener or? Field flattener's coming, it's going to be a three inch model. It'll take it down to about F5, so you can use big chip cameras on this system. Wow, that's very nice. Now, I notice you've got a, an interesting looking mount here. I can see it's a work in progress, but it's pretty beautiful. You want to tell me a little bit about that? I'm going to leave this for the designer, Toslo Bohm, who came all the way from Germany to talk about this new equatorial mount. All right, so let's talk to Toslo. Hello. Hi. How are Hi, you? Dennis. All right. So you've you? got a mount here you want to tell me about. Yeah. We tried to make a new kind of mount that incorporates a few features, features that have not been on the market before. Okay. Um, so we just don't try to make two big axes and then put them on two flimsy pieces of metal so we have big axes for big advertisement. Yep. But we try to make a cone here to have a good contact to the tripod. We have ripped structures here to have a really good and solid base. Then we have a triangular setup, which is has a lock and an aster and um, the adjustment parts separated. So we adjust here yep. and then we lock here. And again, we have a very good contact for all the forces that the mount all right. uh, is, and the load is making. So that's giving you your precision altitude adjustment. This right. is giving me the precision altitude adjustment. And this is giving me the rigidity without passing any small adjustment parts directly into the tripod base. All right. Now, what are you going to use for polar alignment? Polar alignment with this telescope is done differently. We're not going to have a polar scope here, but we're going to have an 8 by uh, 50 polar scope like this one yeah. put in here in front of the declination housing. So we have an 8 by 50 polar finder scope going into the declination, front of the declination housing uh, so that you can very easily align the telescope by looking from the side without the need of crouching oh, beyond that, the... And I, I have done that enough where you have to get down underneath and stare up at it. So you're okay. going to have the scope in here with a right angle finder. Yeah. So you're just going to be able to stand, look in it, make your adjustments. Yes. Very nice. And you've got your azimuth adjustments here. Yeah, that's quite traditional. It's just the yep. two screws and we lock the whole system by fastening this threaded rod. All right, so I mean, obviously this is a prototype because you've got a lot of open pieces here so you can yeah. see the gears, but it's gonna be go-to. Yes, it's gonna be go-to. We have a new go-to system that's going to be delivered with that mount. But the basic idea is that this is a complete um, unit that comes with a go-to system, but the go-to system is just one of its multiple features. Okay. So um, we always, if you're looking into that mount, and that's the reason why we have the transparent covers, so that you can see those ribbed structure in the mount here, and you can see the large bearing diameters that we have here. 
So we're taking the load and get the load into this large bearing, into this large rib structure to get a maximum rigidity. Obviously nicely engineered. What's the load capacity going to be, do you think? Um, well, so far we have tested this with a 14-inch meat SCF yeah. with all the guide scope and stuff. That should be something around 75 pounds or maybe 80 pounds. All right. And we had uh, a two-hour exposure of the bubble nebula on our first night out. So we didn't reach the maximum limit of this mount so far. Right. Um, if the 14-inch works so well, I have absolutely no problem with putting a 16-inch on it. And then, well, See to go the sky's there. the limit, you know? <laughs> how, how heavy is the whole equatorial head if you go to break it down from the tripod to the, to the telescope mounting plate? Yeah, well, that's, um, the equatorial head as a complete unit is uh, 32 kilograms. That's about something 70, like... 75 pounds or so. Uh, that's 67 or something. Okay. Yeah. That's not bad for a mount that can handle that much of a load. Yeah, I think so. And when do you think you'll be uh, done with the prototyping and you have the production models? We've finished five prototypes so far um, and we've been testing them for a few of months now. So we expect that we get the first serial small quantity production at the end of the year. But, um, well, as you know, it depends on various factors. But yeah. end of the year, maybe next spring less. Great. All right, well, listen, thank you for telling me about this. I know Scott's got some other stuff that he wants to show me. So Yeah, it was listen, nice talking to good you. Good luck. Oh, pleasure. Have a nice show. All thank right, you. you too. Thank you. We are continually working on new telescopes that explore scientific. And one of the new scopes we're working on is the 8-inch Macassa grain. This is a carbon fiber tube, 8-inch F10. The telescope will come with the same 8x50 finder as our ED Apos. It will also have a 99% reflective 2-inch diagonal carbon fiber tube. All right. Now you said you were saying there's baffles in this? Well, these gonna... are, this is one of the things that we're thinking of adding to the telescope. Uh, so there's a number of um, things that consumers, and we're very consumer oriented at Explore Scientific, so we're asking the consumers what they'd like to see in a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. That's great. You got more things here you want to show me? That's right. Well, we've got the new ED127 in carbon fiber. Let's go let's, take a look. Let's go take a look. All right. All right. So this is nice looking. Thank you very much. This is the ED127 in all carbon fiber. Now, the big advantage to me with carbon fiber is that it's lightweight, Dennis. Yeah. And many people, they just want something that's lighter weight because it'll perform better on their mount. It's less hassle to pull it out of the case and to deal with it. And so I think overall, you know, aside from its stunning look. I was going to say, it, that doesn't hurt. That right. doesn't hurt. Uh, the carbon fiber has a lot of advantages for someone that has a medium-sized mount. All right, so this is basically the same as the 127 that's been out before. It's a dual speed focuser. You've got the erect image 8x50 finder. That's right. The focusing finder. Dual speed focuser, as you mentioned before. You've got the removable dew cap. Yep. And you get the 99% reflective 2 inch diagonal. Makes a nice package, all told. Well, that's the Explore Scientific ED127 in carbon fiber. So you got more things. Dennis, we have some great eyepieces I oh. want to show you. All right. Our new eyepieces are the 68 degree series, all in waterproof nitrogen purge designs. The 68 degree series are perfectly sharp all the way across the field, but they're long eye relief. All right, so you mentioned before that these are waterproof. So yes. all of your eyepieces, they're, they're nitrogen filled, so that'll keep nitrogen them from- Nitrogen purge, so they keep fog from forming in between the lens elements. Uh, if they get dirty, you can wash them under running water. Just use distilled water to keep the, the water spots off and uh, you can get them clean all the way to the very edges of the lenses. But wait, there's more. That's right. And we got the new Bresser Messier series of telescopes to look at. Let's go take a quick look. Okay. So this is the Messier series. That's right. And we have both reflectors and refractors, a whole line at every prop and wood price point. All right, so start off with this one. This telescope has a two inch focuser, eight by 50 finder. Eight inch F5. Eight inch F5. Five Newtonian. Optics, Newtonian and a new equatorial mount with ball bearings. It's a, it's a nice, smooth equatorial mount with a heavy-duty tripod. You'll All see right. that throughout the line here. All right. Now we're over to the refractor. This is a... This is, an, this is a five-inch refractor. Again, uh, the illuminated 8x50 finder, two-inch diagonal, 
uh, nice handles like you see on the Explore Scientific product. Looks like the same mount that you had on the Newtonian. Same mount. That's right. Ball bearing. Ball bearing mount and uh, very smooth, very nice action. All right. Got another smaller reflector. This is on the Exos 1 mount, okay? The Exos 2 mount is the more heavy duty one. All right, little lighter okay. weight mount. Little lightweight mount, still a nice metal tripod. Adjustments for the mount. And uh, it's a nice starter scope. Very handsome. Yeah. All right, so that the aperture on this again is a? This is 130 millimeters, just roughly over five inches. A little over five inches. That's right. All right. All nice right. all round scope. All right, we've got one more refractor over okay, here. Okay, and this is still a five inch refractor. 127 millimeter. 127 millimeter, shorter focal length. All right, a little faster system. A little faster system. Still, you have the nice 8x50 finder. Uh, you got the uh, two inch diagonal, uh, heavy duty tripod, heavy duty mount, a nice package. All right. That's a nice line of scopes. And Thank as I said, very, very handsome looking scopes. I can see why anybody would like owning these. They look like telescopes. They look like telescopes. All right. It'll be a great way to get started. All right. I know you've got one more thing I'm really interested in. Okay. That's the Telescope Drive Master. Ah, ah, the Telescope Drive Master. All right. That's right. Let's take a look at that. Okay. All right, so this is the Telescope Drive Master, and this to me is exciting because this is new technology that's going to help an awful lot of observers and astrophotographers in particular. Right. So you've got now a situation where you've got these high-resolution encoders right. that go on your telescope mount. This is a really high-resolution encoder. Just a few years ago, encoders like this cost five figures they're now possible to buy at a reasonable price. All right. Okay. So you put the, tele the encoder on the telescope. That's right. You've got the electronics. Basically, yes. the electronics are talking to the drive. That's right. They're issuing drive corrections. And what's happening is this encoder is just clicking away. Clicking. It knows the rate that it's supposed to be going. And That's if your gears have got a little bit of error, if they're a little too fast or a little too slow, this thing tells the mount to speed up or slow down. So basically, it's like having high precision gears. Right. So you get the tracking that you would spend a that great you dream to have. Uh, we're talking about periodic error of less than one arc second is possible with the telescope drive master. Right, without you doing any guiding. Without you doing any guiding, uh, without you having to do any tr uh, training of the drive. You attach this thing, you turn it on, it works. It works, and the thing is with people doing CCD exposures today, a 10 minute exposure is a long time. You've got tracking like that, you're not gonna have to guide. You're not gonna have to guide. All right, you've got adapters for a variety of different scopes. You've got one here. That's right, this is an EQ6 adapter, for instance. So these so, are for the EQ6 mount. That's right, so this, this piece is gonna fit to the polar shaft, okay? Yep. And that attaches to the high resolution encoder. That's all there is to it. The assembly is about 20 minutes. 20 minutes to put it in, and then you've got a one arc second guiding if things are working well. And we got adapters for LX200s, Mead LX200s, Mead uh, LXD75, uh, AP1200 from Astrophysics if you want. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, of course, the EQ6, yep. Vixen, a wide variety. Wow, that's great. Look, if people want more information about all this stuff, I'm sure it's on your website. That's right, at explorescientific.com. Explore Science, that's easy enough to remember for the name. Scott, listen, thank you very much. I appreciate Thanks you telling much. me all the stuff you've got here. Thank Good you. luck with everything and Take care. keep going with the future. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you.